Hi there, I'm Dr. Nicole Rogers, a hair transplant surgeon and board certified dermatologist in New Orleans, Louisiana. And today we're gonna answer the question, PRP, where are we? So PRP has actually been around for many years. It has been used for things like dentistry and orthopedics, and it has more recently been applied toward the treatment of hair loss. And the idea is that if we draw the blood and we spin it down using a high-speed centrifuge, we can then extract off a golden platelet-rich portion, which is very rich in alpha granules, which are found in platelets. And these alpha granules contain a variety of growth factors like platelet-derived growth factor, uh, fibroblast growth factor, epithelial growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, and there's probably a number of cytokines we don't even know about yet. So the idea is that if we can isolate these and then we can slowly, carefully inject them back into the scalp and areas of hair thinning, it may have a helpful positive effect on your hair regrowth. Now, how do we do it exactly? That's the million dollar question. And I always joke with my patients, if you ask 10 doctors, they'll give you 10 different protocols. We offer three main protocols in our clinic. The first involves just using your platelets exactly as they come with no fancy additives. Again, we just draw the blood, we spin it down, we extract off that platelet-rich portion and inject it back. The other way that we can do it is we can add what are called activators and uh, various physicians uh, in the United States and around the world have been using things like calcium gluconate and calcium chloride in order to create a platelet-rich fibrin matrix. And you may have heard the term PRF as another uh, term being sort of shuffled around in this field presently. The advantage of adding calcium chloride in our hands is that we're able to know for certain that in about a 10 minute period, uh, those platelets will create that platelet-rich fibrin matrix in and around your hair follicles. So we know that they'll sort of seal into place exactly where we put them. And we have about 10 minutes from the time that we add that calcium chloride to the time that it is injected before it sets up. The third way that we offer it is with what's called ACEL. ACEL is not FDA approved for anything related to hair. It's actually used for wound healing. Um, but there is some preliminary data suggesting that um, it may help upregulate up things like vascular endothelial growth factor, which if it can be used to, say, heal a sliced off fingertip, maybe it can also be used to help regenerate hair follicles. So in some situations, we will add the A cell to the PRP in order to further enhance the results obtained. How frequently should we do the PRP? That is also a million dollar question. Any medical therapy we do generally takes six months in order to start to see an effect. There is some data that by doing at least three monthly injections of PRP, that results will be seen as early as three to six months after the initiation of that process. Now, once patients get going with the PRP, we usually recommend that they maintain the results anywhere from quarterly to annually. It just depends on how well the hair loss is being handled by whatever other concomitant medical therapies they are using. Should PRP be used as a first line therapy? I'm not sure it should. I feel like it's fairly new in terms of uh, our experience with it and the, the results that we're seeing but for patients who are just very opposed to traditional medical therapies or maybe are not good candidates for hair transplantation, PRP is another very helpful option. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.